Hello and welcome back to the channel. So you've just resurrected a vintage little radio like this one here, Kernel, and you want to use it for a bit of sight work out on site. But you're thinking, hmm, I need a decent battery. Um, not now, this isn't, you know, obviously this is a fairly lightweight radio, but you don't want to go lugging a leisure battery around or big heavy lead acid, you want something light. Well, I just thought I'd make this video um, to show you a few options of what you can do because people have been asking me about batteries and um, you know the thing is you can buy a new a new battery you can buy of course a lithium battery but they're not cheap these days and model lith lithium batteries lipo cells do take a bit of careful management to ensure that they they safely charge and discharge so you've got to kind of know what you're doing and it got me to thinking of what options you could use and I thought of something that might be quite useful so to everyone that asks what sort of battery should I use when I'm out um, on a hilltop or whatever, and my answer is, you've already got one. And people say, what? And I say, well, look, have you got one of these? And of course, most of us have, haven't we? Now, I'm not saying everyone's got a DeWalt battery lying around, but certainly most of us have got power tools that run off of batteries these days. And those batteries might be as lowly as 6 volt or as uh, high a capacity as this one at 18 volts. Now this is a lithium ion DeWalt battery and it's 12 years old and it still pushes out plenty of power. Uh, I, I've been, I use this all the time for jobs and it's still absolutely fine. And so then the second part of the question people will say, well hang on, no, this is 18 volts, I, I can't use this. And you say, well you can. And but one of the primary reasons that you can, of course, is due to voltage regulation. So uh, I'll show you what I mean by that. Now, of course, you could use a simple voltage regulator. But really, nowadays, the buck boost converters uh, type of power regulators are so cheap and are so flexible that they give you so many more options. So you can use this as your power source, obviously. So we've got that little one out of the way. Now, if some of you are thinking, well, I don't like the idea of connecting up crocodile clips or things to this, I understand that because a lot of juice, a lot of uh, energy is held within these batteries. So what I've done for this DeWalt connector, and I'll share these files if people are interested, is for this DeWalt one, so we can safely tap off the power off of the battery, I've actually designed this, and I'll put a little graphic on the screen now so you can see what I've done there in the uh, CAD program and I printed it off on the printer and it's come out in two halves as you can see here and we have the main plug body to go into the top of the battery and uh, a little capping piece on the top. Right now if you simply need to reduce the voltage down uh, you can just literally use a board such as this. This is a 5 amp buck boost converter which will take up to 40 volts input and let you wind that down all the way down just to just a couple of volts. Uh, at 5 amps so you could use something like this these are fairly inexpensive um, and they can be picked up even less than five pounds off of AliExpress so here is here is one of your the first and probably the option most people will go for however it doesn't do the boost function so if you have a power tool say a 9 volt battery or a 6 volt battery you couldn't use that to boost the power um, so, and also obviously with, with these boosters and regulators, you can use these in cars, you can use these in trucks if you've got 24 volts to supply your CB and things like that. Very, very useful device, very versatile and very cheap. Um, so that is, that is one of the options for reducing the power or, or well, that, that's all this particular one can do is reduce the power now. For a little bit more money, obviously another, probably another five pounds from AliExpress, you can get something it's a whole lot more versatile, and let me show you this. And this is it here, the Buck Boost ZK4X. Now, this has all the same features, and it'll, it'll take a, a large input voltage and a um, uh, you know uh, a large input voltage swing to a wide uh, voltage swing on the output. But what it will also do, it'll obviously give you this nice graphical display on the front here but it will do the boost function as well. So you can use this, as you can see, it's got a much bigger heat sink on the back of it as well. And it produces very low ripple. I've already tested this actually on the scope and I was quite impressed with 
um, the low ripple. Now this is probably the, the, the option most people probably won't go for because most people don't need to boost. But I thought I would show this so I could show you the fact that you can boost it from a smaller battery or, or obviously uh, regulate it down from a bigger battery. So let's get this all hooked up and we'll do a little test. We'll get the um, adapter made for the DeWalt battery and uh, get that clipped in and then we'll, we'll I think we'll, we'll use that uh, and we'll also use the, the bench supply so I can give you some idea of what kind of current drain these things draw because obviously there's a, there is a bit of a, a loss in terms of efficiency when, you, when you're doing any kind of regulation and that will be in the form of heat so it's something to bear in mind particularly when you're running it off of a battery. Right, so we've got our connections connected up to the back of the unit. We've got our power supply input here. I'm going to put 18 volts into that. And we have our output on here. And I've got my multimeter probes into the back of the output there so we can keep an eye on the output and see what it's doing. So we'll set this up on the bench so it doesn't uh, glare too much at us. And then we'll turn it on and just see how it's performing. Okay, so we're powered on. Um, we're coming in with 19 volts. And I've just spun this multi-turn uh, potentiometer here. Now it takes quite a few turns. You're not going to accidentally knock this into 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 a silly range by accident, which was one thing I was a bit worried about at first. But it's a multi-turn pot, so you have to give it quite a few spins to get that to work. Depressing the knob on the front turns the output off, so you can see there we've got our on and off light at the top right-hand corner, and quite useful. I didn't realise it did this, but it gives you the option in the bottom to display the um the amp hours and the amps being consumed and the watts being consumed and the amp hours being consumed so if you're running this on a battery you can actually um you can actually calculate how uh, much amp power capacity you've got left in the battery because it also gives you this ui option where you can set i think that's the battery capacity on it as well so very very useful uh, device indeed um and like I say, it's supposed to do five amps. Uh, and I've just got this. I've got the the voltage being monitored on the on the uh, meter here, and we've got exactly the same, thirteen point seven eight volts on there, and on there as well. So let's uh, turn our radio on. There we go. We're coming on on channel nine, and then let's put it on channel twenty. We're going into the dummy load, and let's just key up and keep an eye on these voltages. Now we're doing the full four watts here and our our voltage is not dropping at all let me just show you that on here there we go keying up now doing the full four watts there and it's not even flickering and we can see our amp hour rating going up there that must be the time and then that must be the yes that's the current amp draw so it's drawing 880 milliamps there on tx and on receive 130 milliamps i'll just uh, get the squelch down there you can see we've not got any any noise on uh, on receive either from it. Uh, so so and that ties up with the meter. The meter is doing 135 milliamps. Immediately as you drop it down to nine volts, it st it jumps into boost mode. So now you wouldn't notice any difference. So this is going to be great for those people that want to use them. If you've got your battery declining, if your battery volts are dropping off, this will keep it boosted up to the right level. Obviously, it's going to draw more current, but um, so now we're doing 276 milliamps. So obviously our current's increasing because our input voltage is only 9. So let's try transmitting and I'll tell you what the input current is now. So there we go. That's okay now. We're doing 2 amps. So it will use, uh, it will use more power in boost mode. So we're doing 2 amps there on transmit. So 2 amps at 9 volts. But we've got 13.8 volts. On the output so that's something to bear in mind you don't get something for nothing in, in this world <laughs> obviously so there you go so that so we know that's good so you it will work okay in boost mode okay you can see that's a nice super snug fit on the top of the battery here we've got our positive battery terminal at the front of the battery there and our negative one there and our temperature sensor which is just there in the middle which we're not using what i did was i took off the plastic from the outside just cut it off and then I slotted it through this top housing piece here. It looks a bit manky, but it's actually fine. And we can solder to these wires, and, and then um, these uh, these pins are nice and held in there. They're sort of melted in there, if you like. Um, I've got to do that to focus. Um, 
so that that's fine if you do ever push these um through plastic you have to clean it off afterwards it sticks to it so i took a bit of cleaning off just scraped it off with a standing knife and um so there's the there's the battery there just bring it up a little bit and there's our top housing piece so this bit is going to sit in there so the this top housing section clips in there like that okay and then this this piece clips on this way like so, so there we go i've got those on the in got these on the inside you can actually adjust them and have them on the outside doesn't matter these are actually on the inside excuse the radio in the background there we go and then you can obviously glue that in or glue that down let's just check the voltage with the meter there we go just off the top of that one there try not to shorten them together there we go as our 20 volts right so i jumped onto design spark and designed a little enclosure for this to go into i wanted something fairly small and basic uh, but fairly sturdy as well because there's going to be a little bit of heat kicking around this and i made a little back plate for the back you could pass your wires through that or just pass them out through the side of the box so i did uh made one first attempt and realized it was probably a bit too bulky so i sort of redesigned it so i'll show you that now and uh, you can see what you think and i'll leave these files for you to download right by the magic of tv we've cut back to about six or seven hours later now what i decided to do i decided to change this i think i was a little bit over generous with the size of this a bit too big so i've cut it down with in size made it a lot smaller we've still got features like our little hatch there for our connections but it's much much smaller now and um much more uh take yes quicker to print six hours uh, as opposed to eight for the other one so um yes a bit of an upgrade right so what we'll do is we'll knock this hole out because i think i probably am going to use this hole at some point and it's probably safer to knock it out now than to do it later on so we'll just pop that out and of course if we don't uh you end up using this hole we can always uh 3d print a little bung to go in there anyway so let's just um offer up the controller and see how it's going to drop into there right way because it is going to clip into place and stay there right there we go so it only needs a tiny little slither of plastic and we've got these little retaining clips as you can see there so this should now push in with a satisfying click hopefully if we've done this right there we go and we have and that's in there nicely um and it's not going anywhere and it's nice and nice and level as well and should you wish to remove it from here you could just get a a knife down the side there pop those in and this will come straight out of there and um, i didn't reprint the back there's a number of options you could i could have done for the back but i thought i'd make it really really simple a plain flat plate that just goes on the back and then four m3 screws just go straight into the back of the device and away we go right i'm pretty pleased with that that's come out nicely i've put some uh, m3 screws some stainless screws into the back of there I mean, it looks like we've got plenty of ventilation with those slots on the back there and those slots on the top and, and obviously we just got that finger protection off the back of the unit that i wanted and this can uh, easily be pried out of here you can actually get your fingernail up and with a really firm tug you'll actually lift that meter out so you haven't got to do too much if you do need to fetch that out of there and um i am just going to um go before I release the files, just increase the slot width there, just to pinch that a little bit tighter into the case than I've got it on there. So um, that that's uh, you know that's why you make prototypes. But other than that, I'm really pleased with that. And like I say, you could bring these wires out through the back, or you could just drill a couple of holes in the side. There are options. So let's get that powered up then. Now I can't remember because it's been a while. Did I show you the plug? I'm really pleased with how the plug has come out um there's the uh dewalt plug you can see the contacts as you can see them in there if i get the torch and get the uh the torch light on it there can you see the contacts inside the plug there nicely in there they're not moving anywhere at all i'm really pleased how this has come out i mean this 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 is uh looking like a proper pro you know a proper plug isn't it I, well i think it is and um this um it connects lovely into the top of the uh, the battery and i've got on the other end of it i've put a couple of wago blocks 
for now and uh, a wire there and a fuse it's really important on the output that we fit the fuse as I've said right here we go then we've got it all uh, set up got our Wargo connectors got our DeWalt connector as you can see I've got my arrow on the top there so we should be able to uh, pop the um, connector on the top there plug it in it's nice and firm I'll just show you the there's the connector sat nice and firm in the top Get the camera to focus, there we go, lovely. And we're on, we're cooking on gas as they say. Um, now I have, I have actually printed off the manual for this so I know a little bit more about this unit now. It has a constant current mode, so you can set a fixed current. So you can actually use this for lead acid or lipo battery charging. It's also got an amp hour time mode, as I've already shown on the video. Um, there's, a, there's a sort of pigeon English manual which shows you, you can set um, upper and lower voltage limits so if you're running this off of a lipo battery and you haven't got a BMS you can get it so it cuts out when the input voltage drops below a certain level you can set over current you can set when you power it on whether it comes on straight away or you have to press this button first for it to come on um, so yeah it's quite a configurable um, little device it's got over temp and an over temp uh, cut out as well uh, short circuit protection on the output leads it's got reverse protection on the input leads so all round a very good little device right so let's power on the uh, the cur now there we go the cur now is now powered and we're drawing 0.13 of an amp there so we have a good little setup here now and uh, this is this is a really robust tough little box this this is uh, going to definitely withstand the knocks. Like I said, it's very important to uh, put fuse protection on the output of any high capacity battery like we've got there. Because uh, you know you, you, you don't want to be shorting those leads out because there's not a lot that's going to stop the, the, a lead like that catching fire from a battery like this. So uh, please bear that in mind and obviously keep a good eye on any connections. You can use um, crocodile clips if you don't want to go to the hassle of getting a plug. I've looked online and there are some other DeWalt um, people have done some for other types of DeWalt battery and you can even buy ones off of Amazon but I'm just trying to do stuff a bit on the cheap here. Um, now this battery doesn't owe me anything. Like I say I've had this a very long time and I could use any of my other uh, power tool batteries as long as we don't go over 30 volts. There are other DC to DC converters that will do over 30 volts so if that is your option. Obviously you're limited to 50 watts with this setup but this is great for CB and great for ham radio use. Um, you know uh, on the lower powers uh, I think that um, we could probably you know go up to uh, perhaps using one of the mid power modes on some of the radios I've got here like the ASUS and things so we'll perhaps do that and we'll have a little play around well I hope you found that useful and you've learned something and you can utilize one of your old power tool batteries or any real sort of battery of some kind of capacity to power some of your modern day tech or some of your retro tech as I do here so if you have been thank you ever so much for watching please remember to like and subscribe and we'll catch you on the next one Hello,